You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Out There Hour. We've got a returning guest today, a fine established gentleman who's come to tell you all about those nasty people that want to kill you. The Out There Hour, an alternative future radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com. Yay! bit of mario on the end there nice we all like a bit of mario <laughs> i like to smell a mario in the morning good morning good morning basil good evening and good afternoon to europe africa the middle east the world and bits in between well we've got a uh because we're so popular we have a returning guest we do they come back sometimes they, come, but they sometimes they come back which is a, a strange phenomenon in uh, itself uh did you see what i did there yeah, that's strange good. Phenomenon, yeah. It's a strange phenomenon. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we hope they come back alive. Sometimes they come back alive. Sometimes we dig them up and drag them back. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the wonderful Anthony J. Hilda. Anthony J. Hilda, yeah. Um, he's coming today to talk about England and Ireland's connection uh, with the banking. And he mm. he was talking... I spoke to him briefly yesterday on the phone about how he claims... The English banks are controlling the Republic of Ireland, and they are um, attacking it in nefarious ways. Why does he say English banks, not German banks? I don't know. I yeah. would have thought a lot of them would have been German, but then, of course, a lot of it roots through England. It's it's hard to uh, to figure out what's going on, really. Uh, it is, but I think that's on purpose. We're fed so much nonsense from the media. We're like mushrooms. Keep we're them in the fed, dark. Fed crap. Keep them in the dark. Yeah. And yeah, I, I I personally dubbed Anthony the uh, father of conspiracy theory. Do you think he? Do you think he'd be? You know? Do you think he'd ever go at us if we called him the grandfather of conspiracy theory? I think it would nearly be appropriate by this point. I think it might be. This guy has been talking about the, no, the, the new world order, the Illuminati. Since, since it wasn't even, you know, since it was new. Skull and bones uh, <laughs> since the 50s. It was shiny new when he started talking Absolutely. about it. Now it's a bit tarnished. It's been through the second hand shop twice. David Icke was still a footballer. <laughs> As he says. Oh. <laughs> Goalie. <laughs> Alex Jones hadn't even been born. No, no. Alex Jones is only like... 34 or something, is he? That's okay. Yeah, he aged it? big time. He's about 36 now. Yeah, he looks about 56. What, stress. Yeah. Stress. Stressed himself. Um, and I guess he, Anthony would have been knocking around the same time as a, a very uh, popular guy uh, w- at one time, William Cooper. Bill and Cooper. D- Bill Cooper. I don't know if people are familiar with him. He was... Uh, he was quite good. I yeah. liked him. I only listened to bits of his stuff. He was... He, he, like Alex he, Jones, but not quite as hysterical. Right. He was trying to draw attention to a global elite running mm-hmm. things, uh, to, uh, you know, government uh, cover-ups, mm-hmm. especially yeah. on UFOs as well, I believe. He did do, he did do UFOs as well, didn't he? See, um, Cooper was a little bit different because he, uh, UFOs and the Illuminati, the New World Order, they were all connected. He reckons so, yeah. A number uh, of people say that, though, don't they? And I think we've kind of learned through our shows that they are somehow connected. We found weird connections between the most obscure of theories and ideas. Absolutely. You know, you go, oh, yeah, we're talking about banking, and then we're talking about Nazis. Then you find out that there's connections between them, and then you go, well, uh, let's talk about mysterious things from foreign land. And then you go, oh, hang on a minute, that's connected to Nazis and banks. and Yeah. All goes around the giant circle. Do you think there's somewhat of a disrespect to William Cooper in the truth movement in the way that he's never mentioned or spoken about? It is, yeah, yeah. No, wasn't he involved in a feud with somebody? Well, I, don't oh, I think it, towards the latter years of his life, I think he was in a feud with Alex Jones. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, there was a disagreement, and basically what that was about, that was about the Y2K. Oh, and uh, Alex Jones's coverage of it, the famous yeah, coverage. Yeah, and uh, William, uh, Bill Cooper said that Alex Jones was a fear monger. Mm. Well, he was. He was telling them that nuclear bombs were going off and that they couldn't contact certain cities and screaming and shouting and saying that the yeah. world was ending outside oh, oh. and Bill Cooper's outside buying coke. You know, like, yeah, how you doing? You know, hey. I phoned you from a payphone in L.A. You know. But did you know that Bill Cooper came to a very violent and unpleasant end? He did die a little bit, you know, badly, didn't he? How, how did he die? I am dead. 
it, the, uh, the uh, authorities opened fire on him, uh, opened fire on him for some reason. Oh, did they? Yeah, they oh, I thought him. he died in yet another mysterious car crash. But I... no. He, oh, really? He, he, was, he was shot, shot. by a police. Something. I with, didn't know that. He answered the door with a gun or something. I'm going to Google this. I think you better just in case I got it wrong. God, you could have got everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be awkward? Uh, Bill Cooper's death. Let's have a look and see what we can find here. Uh, here we are. Bill to William Cooper, is that the same guy? Yeah, why don't we wiki it? The answer to everybody. Yeah, uh, Wikipedia, you got everything on there. Bill Cooper murder. This website's a go go for this. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we are. Yeah, uh, Bill f- Cooper, author of Behold a Pale Horse, shot dead in a shootout with yeah, police. A go. shootout? Mm. That sounds even more. Odd. It, do, it is very odd. Um, Considering uh, because, he was smart enough to know not to do that. Well, he was a, he was a, 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 a naval's intelligence uh, oh, officer uh, yeah. in, in his uh, previous career, so he knew a lot about authorities and what not what he should yeah. do, what he shouldn't do. Yeah, he would have known um, not to answer the door with a gun or point it at anybody. He, or? he was saying things that at the time were unheard of and unpopular. Um, um, you know, there wasn't much talk about the government might actually, the, especially the US government, might actually be against you mm. back back in the, uh, when well, was he operating, back in the 70s, 80s? Yeah, yeah. He was discharged from the US Navy in 1975. Um, ufology uh, claims to have seen secret documents. Uh, Ref- US Navy referred, referred to, to knowledge of involvement with ETs. Mm. Bilderberg Group, New World Order. Listen to this. Cooper, Majestic 12, I've heard of those. Cooper linked the Illuminati with his beliefs yeah. that extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials were secretly involved. It's literally straight out of the X-Files, but 20 years early. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean that clearly inspired the X-Files. It's literally the, the, the script for the film. Well, and a lot of theories and books that are knocking around today, mm. and a lot of people we talk to, uh, but I don't hear this guy's name mentioned uh, hardly ever. Now, here we are. Bill Cooper believed that James Forrestal's fatal fall from a window on the 16th floor of Bethesda Hospital was connected to alleged secret committee Majestic 12. We were talking to Stephen Bassett. He was in Bethesda. There's a naval hospital there. That's what they're talking about, I assume. Okay. He's been on about... Oh, I wonder if any of this stuff is what may be... Uh, that, that naval hospital is never the one shaped like a swastika. No, I think that's a military oh, that, thing. I think, ah, yeah, that would be yeah. too much to ask. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> anyway, uh, Cooper claimed the document Protocols of Zion was actually an Illuminati work and <laughs> instructed readers to substitute the word Zion with Zion, uh, Jews for Illuminati, and Goim, Goyim for cattle. Do you see, the, um, and he was talking about the Bilderberg Group, the yeah. Knights of Columbus, the Masons, Skull and Bones. This yeah. is way Years back. Years ago, um, yeah. But again, we're talking about Bill talking about uh, this way back, but of yeah. course our guest today, Anthony J. Hilda, I think, a contemporary of Bill Cooper's. Yeah, yeah. I wonder who was first. Do you think it was Hilda? I think it was actually uh, Hilda. We'll ask him and see what he says. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's do that <laughs> now. <laughs> what, right now? <laughs> nah, not, right, not right now because I want to say hello to a few friends. Oh, yeah. Have you got a list? Have you got, um, have you got a bucket list today of people you want to talk to? Like Jupiter Returns. Yeah, uh, he's always about. Rick, of course. Rick, yeah, um, he's talking to you again now. After you... I'm very fond of Rick. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you said his music was crap. He called you a sidekick. <laughs> we called it evens. <laughs> we called it evens. And... <laughs> I take no offence by being called a sidekick at all, uh, Rick. Anybody would be happy to be my sidekick, Rick. It's okay. <laughs> not for that. Not for that reason. Just because I like you, Rick. <laughs> and there's James uh, Stasiak. With Stasiak, his, yay! With he's, his, he's with, yay with, man. With his yay, yay, <laughs> <clears throat> yay, yay. And uh, I think I hope I got this right. Three eight eight devil, I think, is another contributor. That, that rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? On the uh, YouTube channel, they like to leave comments and uh, make suggestions for guests, and we really appreciate that. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll just have a look here. Actually, we've got some comments coming up here. And we've also got the uh, Facebook page, the Out There Hour Facebook page, which you can like. But if you want to join us, join the, join Altern- the group, Alternative Future Radio group, AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Click on the Facebook icon, and it will take you to the group, so you can make sure you get to the right place. And our guests quite often join the group. So um, if you've got questions oh, for them, you can catch them there. Regularly. And uh, mm-hmm. if we have an upcoming guest, we might say, can you give us some questions you'd like us to ask them? We'll do and it. W- and we'll do it. We'll do it. We're We've done it before. Your We're wo- not scared. Your word is our command. Was D Sweden, my old friend from Sweden. Oh, hi. He's posting uh, comments, I see, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, 38 red uh, down. Uh, very nice. From James uh, Stasiak, we got a double yay. Double yay. And, oh, sorry, it was 38 red devil. Yes. 
Ah. Ah, well, there you go. Blimey, look at this. It's us. And we've got some great guests. We've had Edmund Marriage. We've had uh, Ashwin Farinacci, who's becoming a very big uh, name at Pat the moment. Pat I liked. I was particularly keen. I'm not, not, you're not supposed to have uh, favourites, but I quite like Pat Shenard. He He was... It was very easy to uh, to listen to. It's, he, he, it's, he explained things very well. It's be- yeah, he did. Big it's, subject, it's made, be- made easy. It's becoming a pet subject of mine. I rather love it now. Uh, Foster Ooh. Gamble, Colleen Thomas. God, oh, ben. Ben's probably going to be coming back on soon, uh, I think. Nick Redfern. Yes. Oh, we've got to get him on again. Um, S- just to see if the line drops. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. A- another interesting thing we came across, we were talking to uh, Mac Maloney yeah. recently on his new book, uh, uh-huh. UFOs and Wartime. Wartime. Yeah. And uh, it seems that the, uh, when the mention, he's spoken to Nick, and uh, yep. any mention of UFOs, anything to do with modern term, modern day UFOs, uh, and things, and the lines are going, lines good. keep dropping, and, uh, and we were just, uh, we were laughing. We thought it was just paranoid, you yeah, know, yeah, bit of light-hearted nonsense. And uh, what happened? It keeps happening to us, and the, our line went dead. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go through so many phone lines to get hold of Aaron. C. Hansen uh, to get him back on again. Remote viewing. Well, yeah, remote viewing, and he was talking about well something. He kept saying there were certain subjects that whenever he talked about it, was it cannibalism? I think it was, which was yeah. big in the news. At yeah, the time. yeah, and he, whenever he talked about that, the, his phones were dropping out. But what strikes me is you can use the term New World Order, Skull and Bones, yeah, Illuminati. Bilderberg, Bohemian mm-hmm. Grove. Yeah, you can, talk, you can talk about Rockefellers and, uh, and Rothschilds. Rothschilds. You can name all those people. But, uh, you can talk about George W. Bush. People do. Satanism. Not, not a peep. Nothing. You do have to wonder whether or not they're all distractions. Because there are certain mm. subjects that you talk about and people have problems when they talk about them. Accounts get suspended, deleted, mm. videos go missing... Mm lines get dropped, and they're never the subjects that you think they're going to be. Well, I found it interesting that the UFO th- thing seems to uh, cause such a, yeah. a a breakdown in communication. I didn't think most people took it that seriously, to Neither be honest. Neither did I. I thought it was just a bit of a, a light-hearted laugh for most yeah. of you know Joe public out there. Yeah. I didn't think the government cared at all. No, that that's the thing. No. Mm. Uh, um, they seem to take it much more seriously. And, of course, we've, had, we've come across some information about Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, and the... Uh, Rockefeller? Rockefeller Initiative. Rockefeller Initiative, and they uh, apparently had a great interest in UFOs for a period. And funded research, didn't they? Yeah. Very strange uh, thing, isn't it? Which was kept very quiet. How I can don't... you see these names cropping up? Different places, yeah. different subjects. Well, you've got a president, and you've got Bill Gates, and you've got a Rockefeller, a banking dynasty uh, giant. Let me just do a little Google search for something here, because I'm pretty sure I'm right in assuming that I saw something about, yeah, Google. I've got a space program. Ah. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? Have they got a, a rocket or...? The Lunar X Prize. Um, they've got... They're offering prizes for getting stuff into space, it looks like, that kind of thing. I'm pretty sure that they're actually launching something themselves. But, I mean, Google is a traded company, which means that the shareholders keep the profits and what have you. And you'd have to wonder, if you were investing in a company that was earning good money... Would you want them to go spending some of your potential earnings, your your share earnings, would you like them to start giving it away by running competitions that really serve no financial gain for, mm. for Google? Like Google Earth, you know, where's the money in Google Earth? Google Street View, where's, who earns any money from Google Street View? Why, it's free. Why does that exist, though? Um, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. What kind of company spends a lot of money on Google Street View not to charge for it? I, I find it very useful. I do as well. I like it. But I don't know why they would offer it to us for free. No, no, I don't. There's no adverts on it. There's no real way of making money with it. it. It's incredibly generous. If you're in a city, maybe you could charge adverts for saying, if you want a nice pizza, look over to your left, (laughs) maybe. But the the thing is, they've done Google Street View on backwaters and middle of nowhere. You know, you can go through the desert in Arizona and stuff, you know. Um, Africa, uh, places uh, where, you know. South South Africa. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Ireland, for Christ's sake. It's mostly fields and grass. Every nook and cranny in the Republic. Yeah, what's the point? What, I don't what know. What is the point? Is. I think it was very generous. It's a it. company. It was very, very generous. It's a company that operates for profit, but yet they keep seemingly on the surface having this altruistic way of working where they're doing stuff for free for the good of humanity or for the good of whoever. I don't know. But it doesn't make any sense. And they've still got shareholders to answer to. So why aren't these shareholders saying, actually, if you didn't do that Google Street View thing, you could give us that money? Mm. Most shareholders would be wanting a bit more money. They seem to. Well, I, I really like it, it, but a lot of people find it a massive invasion of privacy. Yes, yeah, a lot of people do. I did until I had my entire street taken off. 
Oh, did you? I convinced them that I owned the street. I think it was only a matter of putting up some kind of... Uh... No, you can have your house removed, maybe. Yeah. I had the whole street removed. Ah. Told them that I owned the whole road and they were trespassing while they were photographing it. And by taking a photograph of private land from private land, I can hold the copyright. And I told them if they wanted to use it, it was a million dollars per page impression. Do you know... They I've, removed it within the hour. I, I think a lot of people would probably probably side a bit with you there, Mark. I don't think they like it. No. I wouldn't want it near me. Yeah. It's quite interesting to look around cities and stuff and places you used to live, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. It was, I How much use is it, really? I tell you Could what, you live without it? I don't know. I guess I don't use it very much. You only use it to be nosy. It serves no yeah. useful purpose. Well, I was looking at... Um, as I say, South Africa is just looking at the abject poverty that they're living in there. I just want to see what was coming ahead for us in Europe here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, look into the future. Yeah, see what I'd be living in in 10 years' time. Yeah. Uh, bri- bli- uh, bri- breeze blocks and... Uh, in an old 20-foot container yeah, off the back of a Chinese yeah, cargo ship. Yeah, and corrugated, with, a corrugated iron roof. With a bottle of water drilled through a hole in uh, the roof for oh, a light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like that's the way we're heading. It's looking with austerity. <laughs> oh yes, oh good old austerity. austerity is good. Apparently, people uh, people like it. Apparently, uh, if you have no money, yes, and you haven't got any money to uh, put into the uh, system, to yes. put into your country, to spend a bit into the economy, uh, yes, that's good. Uh, Germany is telling us. Yeah, apparently that's fine. Uh, don't quite get that. Not sure. They don't seem to be following their own model though, because they seem to be absolutely rolling in money. Yeah, well, I thought it was good for an economy if if the public had money and was able to spend a bit of money and therefore spend it on shops. And yeah, yeah. One would assume that having money and spending money would generally be a benefit to an economy, but it seems the German model is we all have no money, they have all the money. How odd. Well, they're doing everything to put us in that position. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once you stop saying that these people are stupid. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, oh, oh yeah, they're stupid, they're foolish, comedic. they're idiots. A monkey could do a better job. Yeah. No, stop thinking that they're stupid. Yeah. Start thinking that they're evil. Mm. There's only one alternative. If they're not stupid, they must be malicious. You, you have to take the most negative viewpoint of your government. I think so. And uh, work your way up from there. And, and, and Yeah, and work from there and your officials. Mm. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's not nice, but it's the way it has to be. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. you have to always assume the worst. Yeah, and vote, and vote accordingly. <laughs> Indeed, yes. And do remember to vote, won't you? Nice. Nice. <laughs> that was the wrong button I slid down there. I think that's Anthony saying hello to us. <laughs> Not far off. He's probably coming on Skype. He's probably having a nice cup of coffee. It's a bit early there. He'll be expressing up at in, the, as we speak. In New York, I believe. In L.A. Oh, L.A., uh, sorry. 8.15 8, a.m. for him. Wow. And I know he never gets up before 12, so he's made a very special <laughs> effort for us. <laughs> Shall we get him on? Why not? What's coming first? Let's have an ad. Have you always been interested in the esoteric world? Perhaps you'd like to learn more about ufology, lost civilizations, cryptozoology, or even conspiracy theories. We have diploma courses in all these subjects and more, and our tutors are all experts in their fields. So if you want to become an expert or just have a great time learning about exopolitics, false flag terrorism, or the paranormal, then the Esoteric Academy is the place for you. EsotericAcademy.com, where ideas and learning meet. Morning from the other side of the world. Good morning, good, Anthony. Good morning, Anthony. How wonderful we to speak to you. We have an opportunity to change things, and uh, I pray that we work together and uh, extend the knowledge that we have to those who either lack it, ignore it, or abuse it. <laughs> Go on. Must incite a revelation to uh, um, avoid a revolution. But whatever it takes, there is no time left. The time is gone. Uh, you could call this morning and you said, "Well, I'll give you, you know, mm. ten minutes to wake up." <laughs> we don't have the ten minutes. Yeah. We need to wake up now and expand the knowledge that we have throughout the rest of the world. We just, I just did some editing last night about the Hellfire Cave uh-huh. in uh, 
uh, West Wycombe. It's about an hour and a half west of London. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's there. Tourists go there, and uh, they don't pay any attention to what they see. And uh, this is a place where uh, Lord Dashwood and company uh, used to go over there and party. It wasn't really much of a party for some of the kids that they raped. And God knows how many they killed, but uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, our, when I say our, Benjamin Franklin, uh, who was uh, highly involved in the early days of, of creating the United had uh, relationships with children. Mm. And the knowledge of all of this needs to be brought to the public at large. So uh, in this little film we did, on, it's being shown on Paradigm Shift, and I hope that those of you who are listening will go to Paradigm Shift uh, TV, and that's on the Sky Network in England. We have hmm. 10 million satellite dishes. Anthony, what's the name uh, of the film? Least... What? The name of it? Yeah. It's uh, The Hellfire Cave. The Hellfire Cave. Okay. Look out for that. And this is uh, uh, associated with the um, American Skull and Bones, the Brotherhood of Death. Ah. In Yale, at Yale University, they have a book that is published by the Yale Press, and the Brotherhood of Death of the uh, Hellfire C- Cave uh, needs to be exposed as being satanic in nature. What we are facing is a satanic Luciferian agenda anti-Christ anti-people anti-God in fact uh, the president of the United States the elder George Herbert Walker Bush Mm -hmm. was uh, a member and they called him they give nicknames in these clubs Mm. they called him Magog. Yeah. That's the man in the Bible is, is referred to as the the man who wages war against God in the final days of earth. Oh. And the book that is published on the uh, Hell's Fire Club is published from uh, New Haven, Connecticut. It's the home oh. of the Skull and Bones. And hmm. by the Yale Press. It's, it's the stuff is before us. It's around us. It surrounds us. We have to get those who are deaf, dumb, and ignorant out of their apathy, their ignorance, and their arrogance. We must incite a revelation. And I take a look at uh, Ireland and God help you hmm. if you conti- you know if you continue along the same path which is a one way ticket to hell uh, the Irish people need an Irish currency yep. yep if there's enough monies to operate the government if you only create your currency and then issue it as uh, you issue it into circulation, the interest on the currency that the government of Ireland uh, can pay for all of the bills. Yeah. You will literally pay for all of the bills. You don't have to borrow it. Yeah. You just only need to create it. So we're... And if Lord Roth child, yeah. and the Rockefellers can create currency, so can the Irish create currency. Anthony, it we... doesn't have to be borrowed. We were just talking about the wealth 
in Ireland earlier today. I've just picked up the Wikipedia list of countries in the world organised by wealth per capita. And uh, there's a few stats there. This one's from the IMF. And Ireland is ranked 15th in the world. And the United States is number 6. And in front of Ireland, number 14, is Australia. But half of Ireland is currently leaving to go to Australia. Um, but yeah, according to these stats, there's pretty much just as much money here. And get this, Germany's two places behind Ireland. It makes no dif- it makes no sense. Well, I intend to come to Ireland and uh, to speak at at least uh, two to three venues. Mm. And bring up the fact that uh, if the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers can create money out of nothing and lend it to the British, Mm -hmm. why can't the Irish create money out of nothing and Mm -hmm. lend it to the Irish people? And the the, the money that would be made for it will pay for for everything. It's it's a it's a it's a question we uh, we say to ourselves often here, and I, actually, Anthony, I suppose you'd be quite interested in this. Uh, recently, uh, in May, uh, our finance minister and uh, yes. a, a member of the uh, what was it? The, the Bilderbergs. Yeah, yeah, but who did he go with? Oh, he went with a Goldman Sachs uh, senior manager. Of yeah, some a, sort. a Goldman Sachs senior manager and our finance minister attended the Bilderberg meeting this year. And I'm sure you're familiar with the Bilderberg uh, group, Anthony. Well, you know, I've done a film recently, and it's called Illuminati, like from the Illuminati, Uh the Illuminati Bilderberg West Bohemian Grove. Yeah. On the 13th of next month, Friday the 13th, I'm going to be out at the Bohemian Grove calling for a dig. Mm-hmm. I want to exu- uh, uh, to take the bodies yep. that have been buried there, send out the cadaver dogs, mm-hmm. and we're going to do a piece, hopefully, with Russia today, because they are good. They're good, yeah. Very good. And we will put out the information that we did last year, this year. So that's, if we, if you want to get a film on what goes down and about the berries, uh, and I'm not talking about the kind you eat, B-E-R-R-Y-S, but the berries, the the, the death, the destruction, the people that are buried there, mm. that have been sacrificed literally to Satan, mm. yeah. and uh, the Molech. woman with the uh, to the owl of Moloch, yeah, and uh, the lady that was interviewing me for Russia Today said, "Well," and I was talking about the satanic sacrifice. He says, "Oh." They, they don't really do that. That That's just symbolic. Hmm. I said, what? Symbolic? They sacrifice children before the owl of Moloch, and they've been doing this for a hundred frigging years? Yep. And it, it's not of concern? Yeah. You hear the screams in the background. You hear about the reports of the children being tortured. And he said, well, it's only symbolic. It's not real. They don't do it. They don't do that anymore. Anymore? (laughs) Anymore. I'm saying it's time that we dig up the bodies. It's time that we open our eyes. And Kubrick's film Eyes Wide Shut they talk about the Illuminati the Illuminati the people who do this 
to our people, and yet it is acceptable. In England and Ireland, it is accepted. You don't talk about these damn things. That's why we're doing the Hellfire Cave. They have got this giant hole into the side of this of this hill. At the bottom of it, they got the rivers. Uh, oh God! Sticks. They got the river, which is named after hell. Yeah. The river from hell. Anthony, can you tell they us more about, about this the, case? Uh, this is new, new to me. Maybe it's new to a few people. Well, what's happening? What is this? This hellfire, this hellfire case. It's in West Wy- Wycombe. Mm-hmm. It's about an hour and a half out of England, out of uh, London. London. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you take a look at the figurines from the Royal Exchange. You see the, the statue of Wellington, and it's quite fitting that you would have a statue of Wellington in London, because it is the, the story that was sold to the British people that allowed the, for the establishment of the Bank of England. The Bank of England was owned by the Rothschilds. They, they put forth the story in the war with France that Wellington had lost and Napoleon had won. Mm. The stock market crashed. The world was in panic. Mm -hmm. The Rothschilds came and said, we're going to help poor, bloody old England. We're going to simply put forth the money to back up the bank, back up the currency. And, of course you're going to have to give us the right to create currency so we can get our money back. No, they've got the control over England and the English as if it was a, uh, a chain around a dog. The people have been treated like dogs, like animals. I was in one pub in... Uh, uh, I don't know that it was in, in Dublin or uh, where it was there, but uh, one fellow said, I would rather be dead than to be an English soldier. Mm. I'd rather be dead yeah. than to be an English soldier. And that goes for the, the, the case here in the United States with regards to myself. I was looking at uh, a piece that came out uh, on a football hero that had joined up uh, after 9-1-1. He had joined the army, wanted to fight for this country. He thought that was, he was doing the right thing. He found out that he was not doing the right thing and the, the, and the, the reason that we had invaded invaded Iraq was on a false premise a million Iraqis died he discovered that the reason that they had invaded Afghanistan was not to save us from atomic weapons that would be launched from uh, Kabul, hmm. but to protect the heroin crop, and that's essentially what the hell it is. Yeah, yeah. We who listen to shows like this mm-hmm. must must incite this revelation. We must create an independence movement. Ireland is not free. It is not independent. Its currency is controlled by these banksters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
if they serve one term in office, they must agree to serve two terms in jail. <laughs> it's a good deal. And that's the way we must address this issue. There is an enemy within. Anthony? There's an enemy within Ireland. There's an enemy within England. There's an enemy that is trying to bring about a new world order. Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer. One world, one race, one ruler. And you speak to uh, some wonderful people in Ireland. You go into the pubs, and you got some of the happiest people in the world. Yeah, they get a little sloppy, drunk, and but they have a hell of a good time, and the music is terrific. It's you have good, great people. And I've been around uh, the, the country, and I, I've seen the happiness and the wonderment uh, uh, just everywhere. I, my God, you can't allow this country to go down. When I say you can't, we can't. Hmm. We can't allow this to happen. I take a look at... Uh, in, in the United States, the privately owned Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. The banksters took over our currency in 1911. <laughs> yeah. And they essentially signed the documents off about 1914. Mm -hmm. They create money out of nothing then lend it back to us at face value plus interest. Mm. Mm. If this happened in the private sector, these people would be in jail. Indeed. It would be a Ponzi scheme. It is a Ponzi scheme. Like Bernie Madoff would, would, mm -hmm. uh, would be a good guy. <laughs> yeah. And America... Well, Bernie made off with America. I'm in one movie about that. Um, and the mo making movies is the answer. Mm. Because people take them and they make their own movies. They make copies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can, a million people can see a movie, a million people can see a movie before a book can be read by one. Putting out another book is not the answer. Mm. People don't read anymore. They talk, and they talk about what they see. Yeah. About what they know, about what they feel. In the United States, like in Ireland, planes are flying overhead allowed by your government. They're dropping nanoparticulates. Nanoparticulates made of strontium, barium, sulfur hexafluorides, arsenic, aluminum oxide. It kills you. It dulls you. It brings you down to a controllable state of mind. Damn it, if you're listening to this show and if you, you, you've got your head above the water, because these guys know what they're talking about, then you, you know that they're right. But what are you going to do about it? You're just simply going to listen to the show and then, you know, say, well, that, that's interesting. Hmm. No, it's not just interesting. It happens to be fact. We have to deal with those facts. We have to stand up. We have to speak out. It's time you take a stand for your own country. Over here, they're trying to, and are, in fact, in is putting in the smart meters, the murder meters. And I say the murder meters because they are installed forcibly in the homes. Hmm. And they, they have, they put out a field of radiation. They say, well, oh, that, that, it's, it's, it's for the benefit of the rest of the people. Like hell, it's for the benefit of the rest of the people. It creates class 2B carcinogens, cancers, 
Mm. He said, well, there are only small cancers in the brain and the breast of your man and the balls. <laughs> yeah, nobody minds a small cancer, Anthony, surely. Small cancer, you know. <laughs> They're ster- they put stereotypes in into the water. It makes you sterile. It takes away your manlyhood. It takes away children. If we take a look at the, uh, at the children, they're being deformed. They're being monsterized before our frigging eyes. And I think, when are the people going to wake up? We've got a, a website called Air Crap. Air Crap. C R A P. Air Crap dot org. Mm-hmm. And we put forth pictures that you guys send us about the crap. It's like toxic toilets that are flushing over your land. They flush this stuff. It's like a, a, a ballpark toilet. You're at the soccer stadium and the toilet is overflowing. They're going out and they're flushing this stuff on you. But people don't talk about it. People don't think about it. Like it doesn't exist. It does exist. It is happening. It's doing. And it's happening mm. now. Mm. But there's a, then they poison the water with sodium yeah. fluoride. Yeah. The same stuff they they feed to the rats to kill the rats. I guess we are supposed to be the rat people. And these sons of bitches want to reduce the population of the planet by 95%. You say, oh, well, they're not going to kill off 95% of the Irish, are are they? No, no. The hell they're not. They're in the process of doing it. It's mass murder. It's genocide. It's infanticide. It's humanicide. Damn, you need to listen. You need to wake up. Or prepare to die. Mm. So that's my message this morning. Do you think people are waking up, though, Anthony, in sufficient numbers? Um, mm. There is a large portion of the population who. I mean, we we had a vote here recently uh, on another EU um, yeah. condition, another referendum, and it was a- another referendum, and actually the majority voted yes to more EU. Uh, tyranny, mm, more austerity, and, more and more, poverty, more austerity, more poverty. More longer. I, I just don't. You know, th- I, I, I used to, I used to think that the Irish were somewhat intelligent. <laughs> but what enough? Yeah. F, you know, are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Are you not thinking at all? How damn dumb must you be to vote for the EU? The EU is Hitler's dream come true. It's crazy. Think of it. The EU is. Hitler's dream come true. I put out a a, a, a film mm-hmm. under that title. Yeah. In England. With Brian Garrish. Yeah, I've seen it. It's great. In the in, this is in, in the back of a house in a, in a little glass house. Mhm. In Bournemouth. Yeah. Mm. We say he just simply came over to to, to talk privately with me and I said what do you mean talk privately with me we're going to film this <laughs> we filmed it and that's what we need to do yeah with the intelligent people of Ireland are there enough waking up no there are not enough waking up and I'm saying you must prepare prepare to take a stand not just think about doing it Ireland is a small country there are more people in Los Angeles County than there are in Ireland there are more sheep in Ireland than there are in Ireland well there are more sheeple in Ireland (laughs) I knew you were going to say that uh, years ago, I came up with that term, sheeple. Oh, did you coin that phrase, um, Anthony? Yes, of course. Oh, wow. Blimey, I didn't realize. <laughs> sheeple, banksters, 
Illuminati. Yeah. Uh-huh. People forget how long you've been doing and this. I uh, talk about the... Uh, the... The ignorance, the arrogance, the apathy. Mm. Those are our major enemies. I was in a little town in England. Um, some of the fellows who were um, makers of the circles, they're circle makers. They go out and they plan each year to go out when the crops are up there and they design these things. They go out, and this one fellow showing me. Oh, the crop circle you know, what fakers. What of the circle he was involved in? What? The crop circle fakers you were with, the yes. Wessex skeptics are one of those groups. Anyhow, I, I had spoken before their their group, and the fellow says, "Oh, there's going to be some some uh, some circle makers here tonight." So uh, there's two or three of them. You won't know who they are, but. Uh, um, he was telling me about them, and then when he was at home, he was showing me one of the circles, and he was proud that he was involved in <sighs> something of that nature. And these people will believe that, this, well, this is a, um, um, they 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 get a kick out of you know putting forth a story. Well, there's a story going on in Ireland. And it's the greatest lie ever sold. Mm. Outside of this little town, there's uh, the, the Lord Rothschild has an estate. Mm-hmm. And I told my driver, I said, look, let's drive by Lord Rothschild's. He said, oh, you can't do that. I said, why not? I said, no, no. I said, we can do that. <laughs> He said, no, 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 you, you can't do that. I said, why not? Hasn't anybody thought of it? I'll go over and ask him, listen, knock on the door. He says, listen, I've got some concerns. Maybe we have a, you know, a cup of tea. As you go over towards the estate, you look out in the field, and we have this on Paradigm Shift TV. Yeah. There's the Rothschild Pyramid. I said, my God, that thing looks like uh, the glass pyramid, 666-pane glass pyramid outside of the Louvre Museum Mm -hmm. in Paris. And I said, that thing looks like it was made by the same architect. And when I researched it, I found out it was. Hmm. This is by the same architect, if you go to Paradigm Shift TV. I have this story, so you can watch it. You don't have to go out there. Just turn on the damn television. Just research it. And I'll be standing out there in the field with the sheep. And... (laughs) Uh, outside of the town that's loaded with sheeple. My cameraman said, well, um, he was, had been there before. They do, would go out in that particular area to pick the magic mushrooms. And I thought, well, my God, are these people that high that they don't get it? Yeah. There was a couple guys that went out and told me that uh, uh when they were initiating this thing, when they were having the rituals, and I say rituals, these guys had gone out there, and when they were, uh, they had heard that some sort of meeting was to take place. Mm-hmm. And they walked out there um, behind some trees, far enough away so they could see what was going on, and during the evening, there were some people, a procession, people dressed in black robes. Mm-hmm. They went out to the area where they had built the structure. They had built a, 
a crew came out there and built this huge Christian cross, dug it into the ground, put the concrete supports on on the side of the cross, and above the, the, the Christian cross, they had a Gaelic cross. And on top of that, they had the pyramid. It's about 60... 80 feet high and, and then they built another pyramid upon that and they told this story and my cameraman said oh you don't believe this guy you know he's coming up with all of these wild things I said first of all I said before you simply discount what he's saying why do you think in the middle of nowhere in England on the Rothschild estate Mm -hmm. They would be building such a structure. Why is it built? Why is it engineered? Why is it created? For what reason? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, well, and he was telling me, this, this fellow had told me the story. He said, well, they had uh, claimed that there was a group of people. And I said, well, who are these people? He said, well, uh, the fellows that were watching it on you know, from the uh, behind the the bushes, behind the trees, uh, at the edge of the field, he said they were Rothschilds, rock stars, and royalty. Uh. I said, "Oh no, oh no! Certainly, they wouldn't have a procession like that. That would indicate that there might be something that would be Luciferian or satanic, not the Rothschilds, <laughs> oh, not the royalty, yeah. not, not, not the rock stars, not these crazy sons of bitches who are doped up and running around asking for a new world order, yeah. asking that the country be green like Ireland. Oh, God, you know, let's protect the environment. Let's protect the country from pollutants at the same time they are dumping pollutants they are flushing the toilets upon the people the children breathe this yeah your mothers your sisters your brothers your fathers breathing in this crap getting radiated dying And the children that are being born, there was about one in 2,000 that were born into autism when I was growing up. Now the American military are producing one in 88 born from military parents who are autistic with the big heads some with the three eyes yeah. some of the little hand growing out of the side of their body they are creating monsters amongst us yeah. you say well we have to respect these kids they're just kids my god you know this is just it's, it's accidental no it's not accidental it's deliberate just by design hmm. can we allow it if we do we don't deserve anything other than the death that they are presenting to us. Ireland must be free. It must be independent. A nation that is united is not free. A nation that is free is not united. The United States is not free. Yeah. Is there a free nation? No nation is free unless its currency is independent from the banksters, and the banksters want a world country. Mm. A world country. And I say, what is the hell is a world country? They want to do away with all nationhood. They want a world country. And they go there planning and controlling that country. And that just came to mind. I, it, uh, it probably doesn't make any sense, but then does it make sense to surrender the sovereignty mm. of Ireland to England? The English at one time said, hey, we're only going to go so far. We're only going to take so much. Bend over. Yeah. 
Yeah. Bend over, hold your knees. Here it comes again. Yeah. And my God, they said they said well, the the resistance is going to set a line. It's like uh, the pale. We're not going to go beyond the pale. That's where the expression comes from. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Don't go beyond the pale. That's going to be a limitation there as to how much we're it's, we're going to limit the amount of subversion. We're going to limit the surrender. We're only going to allow so much killing. No, you can't be killing. No, you can't allow your children to be made slaves in your own land and taxed by these bastards to pay for the enslavement of your own people. Is the are the Irish not as dumb as the American people? Yes, you got smart people, but smart people do dumb things. Yeah. So the question is, when is it going to be that Ireland? wakes up and becomes free. Brita Murphy was out there chaining herself to some sort of gate. Mm -hmm. Hello, Brita. Outside the parliament. Yeah. And she has more balls than most men. And most men don't have any balls at all. They'll do a good talk in the in the in the pub. They'll have a you know a few beers. Yep. They'll you hear the anger and you'll feel oh my god this is awful and this is awful and this is awful mm -hmm. and they'll go home to bed and they'll get up in the morning. The one thing that hasn't left them is the stupor. Yeah. Not only is it the sheeple, it's the stupor. Hmm. That's another word. It's the stupor. The arrogant, the, the ignorant, the apathetic. But are, are they apathetic? God. From, are they apathetic from the fluoride and the chemtrails? I mean, is it even normal to be so apathetic, to be so mindless? Yeah, are they programmed no, or medicated? dumbing them down. I get pictures from Ireland. I'm looking at the pictures in uh, aircraft.org. Yeah. We have another site called Our England, Our England, mm -hmm. UK dot com. Mm -hmm. I decided, well, hell, the damned English are not protecting their own people. So I said, well, I'm just simply going to create a, a website. OurEnglandUK.com. Then we did another one called CommonCrime.net. Ah, mm -hmm. because the crime is international in nature. So, what do we do about it? How do we awaken the world? Hmm. Damn! And Can this be happening? Yes, it is happening. Anthony, when is it going to stop? What must it say that it takes someone from America to tell people in Europe what's wrong? What, what, seriously, what, what does that say? <laughs> no offense to you, My but God. seriously. <laughs> you know, I, I would go over, the, 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 there, there's, there's more bombings in one little hotel that I went to over there in Dublin than any other hotel in the country. Yeah. They come in to, to bomb, the, you know, bomb the hotel. Oh, really? They have to recognize who the enemy is.
the enemy in Ireland are the Irish. Hmm. Hmm. The Irish that are not awake, that are in this stupor. That don't, you, how, what does it take to look up in the sky and you see a plane going over and, you're dump, and they're dumping strontium, barium, sulfur hexafluorides? We can prove it. We show it. We talk about it. Hmm. And financial and terrorism. Are you stopping it? Yeah. yeah. The terrorists are paid for by the Irish people. Why do you think you're in debt? Yeah. But you're allowing the banksters. And I'm it's yeah, I want to come to Ireland and mm -hmm. speak in two, three, four different places. Yeah. Invite me to Ireland and I will come. I want this revelation to occur. This awakening. It's going to take all of us working together. You, the war is against the world. The war is to bring about a new world order. A, a, a financial war. Anthony, you, you have, I mean, you're quite an authority on this. You've been looking at this for a long, long time, and the, you had contemporaries. You had uh, William Cooper, who was shot tragically, uh, Jordan Maxwell, I know, who's a, a researcher into the occult. Um, did, did you know Bill Cooper, Anthony, at all, personally, or did you just well, know... Well, Bill Cooper was one of my closest friends. Oh, no, really? I was supposed to go over and see him. I, he said, they're, they're going to kill me. Yeah. And I wanted to go over before they killed him. Yeah. And my lady friend and I would go down there, and he uh, he really loved her, and Bill had uh, just... <sighs> about a leg and a half one leg was cut off people most people didn't know that no I didn't, no, I didn't know that yeah. and he fought every day yeah he fought every night he fought every hour Bill and I were friends mm. well, Jordan well, Maxwell Jordan. started in on his campaign with a film with a a record set of by Myron Fagan called the Illuminati. Yes. We put this thing out. It went uh, at that time maybe eight, nine thousand people around the world knew something of this evil archy. Yeah. And I say it's an evil archy. Mm -hmm. Good word. They knew something of it. Good word. So bridges Wars like bridges are engineered. Mm -hmm. They're created out of fiction. They're fabricated. They're designed for people to die, not to free, for people to be free. Yeah. Mm. They're not allowed, people aren't allowed to be free. They're brought into this evil archy. They are used, they are abused. They're screwed. It, it, but it must have been a lot harder back in, uh, in the early days, um, in the 60s and 70s, for you yourself to try and get this message across. I mean, there's more people, more people are aware of it now through the internet, but you must have had a hell of a job trying to tell, uh, you know, to explain about the, uh, the Illuminati or Satanism, um, or the New World Order? Uh, I mean, was it difficult back in, in the 60s and 70s? Well, it was about 8,000 people in the world knew about it. Now there's in excess of a billion. What do you think? Yeah. 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 That has to be... Where did the billion get their message? Well, it had to start with people like Through you. Bits and pieces of film. Yeah. Well, we are all in a different stage of learning. You figure it's like a streetcar of information. We go along and people are just getting on. Okay. They're just getting the message. Yeah. As it goes down further on the line, more and more people get the message and they in turn reach others. 
So we have to reach out and touch beyond our fingertips. We have to learn not only what is happening, but to, to the, we must develop the capacity to hear beyond the limitation of our ears. Hmm. We have to reach out and touch beyond our fingertips. And a fellow had written a song early on when I was in the music business. Yeah, you were a producer. Uh, he was uh, talking about faith. So when you see your child reach out for a star, hmm. you must have faith. When you see your child reach out for a star, you must have faith in your heart that he might reach that new vision, that new position in life where he can turn to the rest of the world and say, look up, yeah. open your eyes and see. Uh, Kubrick talked about an organization existent in London. It's existent for, certainly at the Skull and Bones mm -hmm. at Yale University. Certainly it's existent at Rio Monte alongside the Russian River in Northern California where they're going to have on the 13th of this next month another sacrifice yeah. of children. I say, oh, well, they're just not really... They're not doing this, mm. you know, you hear the screams. Yeah. And they pump them out. It's all organized. It's all planned. I used to manage um, Bob Linkletter, the son of Art Linkletter, who told me about the activities that his father was involved in. Oh, yeah. At... The skull and uh, that the, the Bohemian Grove before but, the Isle of Mullet. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Anthony, really, what is the answer to to all of this? Because there's only so much that you can do by making films like you have for the last few decades making programs like we make and so many other people out there making them as well and you can listen and you can learn but do people not really have to get to the point where they're either hungry or angry before they'll do anything they have to be hurt I think that a lot of people are going to have to die mm. yeah. yeah I think you're right it's unfortunate needless But if they're dumb, they will die. Mm. It's a sad fact. We cannot survive and remain ignorant. Not for very long, anyway. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> that, we've le that we've lived this long. <laughs> it is amazing no, how... I've been shot. You've been shot. Who shot you and why? Of course, yes. Why? Did they have a reason? Well, we know Bill Cooper was you shot. Shouldn't, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to be asking that question. Mm hmm. They shoot you to kill you to stop what you're saying from becoming public. Hmm. Hmm. Can we allow ignorance amongst us to dominate? Uh, I was watching the show on with uh, on CNN last night. Yeah. And the former wife of a military fellow who had joined the services, thinking that he was going to protect this country, was talking and about the cover-up that this government was involved in 
because he was going to talk about the heroin that was being protected by the U.S. military. Uh huh. And he was the poster boy. The poster boy for the U.S. military. Because he was going to save the world he joined to rather than get a three or four million dollar contract. Yeah. He thought the right thing to do was to fight for his country. Mm. He wasn't fighting for his country. He was fighting for the rule of the Fourth Reich of the rich. The Rockefellers. Hilda, <clears throat> the Rothschild. looking looking at what's going on in Europe at the moment, you can see, I'm not sure what kind of news you get where you are, but if you look around, you can actually get some real news. Um, what do you think about what's happening in Greece right now? Because there are a few more rungs down the ladder than the likes of Ireland and, and Portugal. And I'm not sure if you got this in American news yet, but Cyprus has just asked for a bailout and Spain's bailout went almost unmentioned in the media. But but Greece was pretty much the first one to go and they're further down the line than we are. Are you getting much news over there about Greece? People there are getting pretty hungry. We're, we're hearing about actual well, hunger. We, you know, I watch a bit of Russia Today. You don't mm. find it on ABC, NBC or CBS. No, no. We have a war that is being developed now in the world. Mm. They say, well, we've got to fight to the very last American mm. to bail out the Zionese. You say, oh, well, well, you know, that sounds like you're anti-Semitic. No, we're not anti-Semitic. In the Bible, it says, beware of those who call themselves Jews, but are not. Yeah. They're not Jews. Yeah. They're, an they're anti-Semitic, they're anti-Jewish, they're anti-Christian, they're anti Islam. What are they? What are they then? Anti-human. Do they have a name? They have a different satanic Luciferian agenda. Mm -hmm. Dare we talk about them? Oh yes, we dare. We had damn well better talk about them, otherwise the Irish soldiers are going over there to die. Yeah. You say, well, you know, what? We, we're only a small country. We can only contribute a few, you know. So we, you know, so we lose two or three hundred Irishmen, right? Mm -hmm. We lose two or three hundred Irishmen. Who are we to decide? Who are they to decide who's to live and who's to die? But yet, that is the case. It's unacceptable. We have tolerated the unacceptable, the unthinkable. Now we must do the un, what's considered to be the undoable. Like in the man from La Mancha, to dream the impossible dream, to achieve <laughs> the impossible goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dare we win this war against the world? Hmm. Absolutely. I really look forward to being with you guys in Ireland. And we look forward, yeah. Talking to those who will listen and those who will act upon this to doing interviews with individuals on oh we've got we've got interviews that are done I, I took a train from that great river you have down there yeah all the way up to um, to Dublin and yep. all the way up to from the Shannon the Shannon yeah from the Shannon and as I'm going and talking to people in railroad cars about this, this atrocity that's happening. Hmm. And it's an atrocity. 
It's a holocaust. Yeah. And it's only allowed because of ignorance. Mm. Only allowed because of apathy. Mm. It must come to an end. Uh, Anthony, unfortunately, we must come to an end here today as well. It's been such a pleasure to have you speaking to us again, and we really appreciate your information. And I hope that here in Ireland, uh, Africa, Europe, and the Middle East, who we're broadcasting to, will uh, take on board what you've been saying because it's, it's a very serious uh, subject. And uh, somebody like yourself. Well, you can go to. Um, yeah. You can go to um, aircraft.org, mm -hmm. commoncrime.net. FreeWorldAlliance.com, mm -hmm. Free World Filmworks. Yeah, you have all your you films. Paradigm Shift TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All your films are it's on uh, FreeWorldFilmworks.com. We're, we're, on, we're, we're on, looking at that now. Yeah, you've got an incredible backlog of, mo of There's films. There's a big you've made back catalog here. of uh, films on there. Yeah, and uh, you can order them directly from the website here. Uh, Free World Film Works. He's got and, and you're saying that they're, they're airing your movies currently on, on Paradigm Shift TV? I think that's Sky Channel yes, uh, 200, last, 201? Last night, yes, uh, uh, well, on Tuesday, uh, we're, they come out uh, for two hours. They have a show two hours uh, before uh, 10 million satellites mm -hmm. throughout the UK. And it's uh, you can actually watch it here in Los Angeles or in San Francisco or Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. You can watch it throughout the world fantastic I want I desire to come to Ireland well we certainly hope you make a it chance to... well if I make it it's because of what you guys do well we'll do what we can I accept the invitation before <laughs> before I'm invited mm -hmm. God bless you all <laughs> and as they say in the land south of this country in Mexico, mm -hmm. via con Dios. <laughs> Go with God, my friend. Thank you uh, very much, Amen. Anthony. It's been a, a pleasure again. No doubt not the last time we'll speak. Well, God bless, God speed, and uh, let us work for a free and independent Ireland. Absolutely. I think we're going to need it. And, and God bless you, Anthony, and thanks ever so much. Okay. Thanks, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. Wow. Some heavy, heavy tomes there. <laughs> it was. That was, uh, that was one where we listen. Yeah, we didn't say much. We didn't get to say much, folks. Yeah. Uh, but with then we didn't have to because we had the great Anthony Hilda. Yeah. And uh, a, a friend of Bill Cooper, actually. Didn't was know that. Quite interesting. Uh, we didn't find out who came first. I think it was Anthony. Yeah. I, I was I kind of edging that way. I was yeah. being a bit. I was being a bit nosy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he brought up um, a favourite uh, researcher of mine, Jordan Maxwell. He's a researcher into the occult. Yeah, yeah. I've, I found out a lot about symbol uh, symbols and. Uh, yeah, I've watched a couple of his films actually. Yeah, yeah. I, he made a lot yeah. as well. He's a little I, bit, bit, very much like Anthony, very prolific. Yeah, but th another thing about it, Mark, he's also very afraid. Really? Yeah, I've listened to some interviews with him uh, recently, and his his phone tapping and everything else. He mm -hmm. just doesn't like to leave the house anymore. He's seventy odd now, and he just he doesn't do a lot of appearances because he was just he, he's tired of the harassment. Yeah. Wow. Why, why can we get him on? Shall we try? Let's we'll, try. We'll try for nothing. Because yeah. I know he really doesn't like doing it anymore. You know, really? But, yeah. I thought he was still making films. I thought I saw an interview with him sometime recently. Yeah. The, the last couple of interviews, because I'm very fascinated with Jordan Maxwell, and the last few interviews, he, he, he didn't sound too happy um, oh, really? at all. Yeah. Mm, maybe become a bit reclusive. He just felt he was getting too much harassment from somebody. Mm. Oh, we get a lot of this kind of thing on this show. We get a lot of that. Yeah. Right, okay, so I think we're probably about done. Is that it already? I think, yeah, yeah, we've gone careering over the hour. Well, say hello to us on Facebook. Yes, do it. Like the Out There Hour or jo join the uh, Alternative Future Radio group. Uh, um, comment on YouTube, on the, uh, the Alternative Future Radio uh, YouTube channel. Why not? And if you're listening to us on iTunes, do leave us a bit of a review and... Uh, 
you know, we'll be very grateful. Say hello to us. Say hello. Would somebody say hello? Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. We'll do it. <laughs> we're, we're the radio versions of whores. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> thanks ever so much, and we'll see you next time. See you later. On the hour. Adios. Bye-bye. AlternativeFutureRadio.com Stalk us on Twitter at OutThereHour. Send hate mail to helpdesk at alternativefutureradio.com. Insult us at facebook.com forward slash out there hour. Troll us on youtube.com forward slash AF Radio YT. Send us questions for upcoming guests, make requests, or just complain. It's all good. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. of Zion was actually an Illuminati work and instructed readers to substitute the word Zion with Zion, uh, Jews for Illuminati and Goim. Goyim for cattle. Do you see, the, um, and he was talking about the Bilderberg Group, the yeah. Knights of Columbus, the Masons, Skull and Bones, this yeah. is way Years back. Ago. Yeah. Um, but again, we're talking about, Bill talking about uh, this way back, but of yeah. course our guest today, Anthony J. Hilda. I think a contemporary of Bill Cooper's. Yeah, yeah. I wonder who was first. Do you think it was Hilda? I think it was actually uh, Hilda. We'll ask him and see what he says. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's do that <laughs> now. What, right now? <laughs> nah, not right, not right now, because I want to say hello to a few friends. Oh, yeah. Have you got a list? Have you got, um, have you got a bucket list today of people you want to talk to? Jupiter Returns. Yeah, uh, he's always about. Rick, of course. Rick, yeah, um, he's talking to you again now. After you, I'm very fond of Rick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you said his music was crap. He called you a sidekick. <laughs> we called it evens. We call it evens. <laughs> and I take no offence by being called a sidekick at all, uh, Rick. Anybody w- would be happy to be my sidekick, Rick. It's okay. <laughs> not for that. Not for that reason. Just because I like you, Rick. <laughs> and there's James uh, Stasiak. With Stasiak. His, yay. With he's his, he's with, a yay man. With his yay. Yay. <clears throat> yay. Yay. And uh, I think, I hope I got this right, 388 Devil, I think, is another contributor. That, that rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? On the uh, YouTube channel, they like to leave comments and uh, make suggestions for guests, and we really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll just have a look here. Actually, we've got some comments coming up here. And we've also got the uh, Facebook page, the Out There Hour Facebook page, which you can like. But if you want to join us, join the, join Altern- the group. Alternative Future Radio group. AlternativeFutureRadio.com. Click on the Facebook icon, and it will take you to the group, so you can make sure you get to the right place. And our guests quite often join the group. So um, if you've got questions oh, for them, you can catch them there. Regularly. And uh, mm-hmm. if we have an upcoming guest, we might... You're listening to Alternative Future Radio, home of the weird, resting place of the paranormal. We'll take you to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Strange phenomena, aliens, psychics, cryptozoology, conspiracy, holistic health, and UFOs. Alternative Future Radio, where spooky just got weird. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Out There Hour. We've got a returning guest today, a fine established gentleman who's come to tell you all about those nasty people that want to kill you. The Out There Hour, an alternative future radio. The Out There Hour with Basil and Mark. Basil and Mark. www.alternativefutureradio.com. Yay! Yay! bit of Mario on the end there. Nice. We all like a bit of Mario. <laughs> I like the smell of Mario in the morning. Good morning. Good morning, Basil. Good evening and good afternoon. To Europe. Africa. The Middle East. The world. And bits in between. Well, we've got a... Uh, because we're so popular, we have a returning guest. We do. They come back sometimes. They come, but they, sometimes they come back. Which is a, a strange phenomenon in uh, itself. Uh, did you see what I did there? Yeah, that's strange good. Phenomenon, yeah. Strange phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we hope they come back alive. 
Sometimes they come back alive. Sometimes we dig them up and drag them back. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the wonderful Anthony J. Hilda. Anthony J. Hilda, yeah. Um, he's coming today to talk about England and Ireland's connection uh, with the banking. And he, mm. of course, shot dead in a shootout with yeah, police. A go. shootout? Mm. That sounds even more... Odd. It, uh, it is very odd. Um, Considering uh, because, he was smart enough to know not to do that. Well, he was a he was a, you, uh, a, a naval intelligence uh, oh, officer uh, yeah. in in his uh, previous career, so he knew a lot about authorities and what not what he should yeah. do, what he shouldn't do. Yeah, he would have known um, not to answer the door with a gun or point it at anybody. He, or? he was saying things that at the time were unheard of and unpopular. Um, um, you know, there wasn't much talk about the government might actually, the, especially the US government, might actually be against you mm. back back in the, uh, when well, was he operating, back in the 70s, 80s? Yeah, yeah. It was discharged from the US Navy in 1975. Um, ufology uh, claimed to have seen secret documents. Uh, Ref- US referred Navy referred to, to knowledge of involvement with ETs. Mm. Bilderberg Group, New World Order. Listen to this. Cooper, Majestic 12, I've heard of those. Cooper linked the Illuminati with his beliefs it, that extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials were secretly involved. It's with, literally straight out of the X-Files, but 20 years early. Yeah. I mean, I mean that clearly inspired the X-Files. It's literally the, the, the script for the film. Well, and a lot of theories and books that are knocking around today, mm. and a lot of people we talk to, uh, but I don't hear this guy's name mentioned... Uh, Hardly ever. Now, here we are. Bill Cooper believed that James Forrestal's fatal fall from a window on the 16th floor of Bethesda Hospital was connected to alleged secret committee Majestic 12. We were talking to Stephen Bassett. He was in Bethesda. There's a naval hospital there. That's what they're talking about, I assume. Okay. He's been on about... Oh, I wonder if any of this stuff is what may be... Uh, that, that naval hospital is never the one shaped like a swastika. No, I think that's a military oh, that, thing. I think. Ah, yeah. that would be yeah. too much to ask. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> anyway, uh, Cooper claimed the document protocol. He was talking, I spoke to him briefly yesterday on the phone about how he claims the English banks are controlling the Republic of Ireland and they are um, attacking it in nefarious ways. Why does he say English banks, not German banks? I don't know. I yeah. would have thought a lot of them would have been German, but then, of course, a lot of it... Routes through England. It's it's hard to uh, to figure out what's going on, really. Uh, it is, but I think that's on purpose. We're fed so much nonsense from the media. We're like mushrooms. Keep we're them in the fed, dark. Fed crap. Keep them in the dark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I personally dubbed Anthony the uh, father of conspiracy theory. Do you think he? Do you think he'd be? You know? Do you think he'd ever go at us if we called him the grandfather of conspiracy theory? I think it would nearly be appropriate by this point. I think it might be. This guy has been talking about the, new, the new world order, the Illuminati. Since, since it wasn't even, you know, since it was new. Skull and bones uh, <laughs> since the 50s. It was shiny new when he started talking Absolutely. about it. Now it's a bit tarnished. It's been through the second hand shop twice. David Icke was still a footballer. <laughs> As he says. Oh. <laughs> Goalie. <laughs> Alex Jones hadn't even been born. No, no. Alex Jones is only like... 34 or something, is he? That's okay. yeah, He it's, aged big time. He's about 36 now. Yeah, he looks about 56. What, stress. Yeah. Stress. Stressed himself. Um, and I guess he, Anthony would have been knocking around the same time as a, a very uh, popular guy uh, w- at one time, William Cooper. Bill and Cooper. D- Bill Cooper. I don't know if people are familiar with him. He was... Uh, he was quite good. I yeah. liked him. I only listened to bits of his stuff. He was he, like he, Alex he, Jones, but not quite as hysterical. Right. He was trying to draw attention to a global elite running mm-hmm. things. Uh to, uh, you know, government uh, cover-ups, mm-hmm. yeah. especially on UFOs as well, I believe. He did do, he did do UFOs as well, didn't he? See, um, Cooper was a little bit different because he, uh, UFOs and the Illuminati, the New World Order, they were all connected. He ranked so, yeah. A number uh, of people say that, though, don't they? And I think we've kind of learned through our shows that they are somehow connected. We found weird connections between the most obscure of theories and ideas absolutely you know you go oh yeah we're talking about banking and then we're talking about nazis then you find out that there's connections between them and then you go well uh, let's talk about mysterious things from foreign land and then you go oh, hang on a minute that's connected to nazis and banks and yeah all goes around the giant circle do you think there's somewhat of a disrespect to william cooper in the truth movement in the way that he's never mentioned or spoken about it is yeah yeah no wasn't he involved in a feud with somebody well, I, don't oh, I think it, towards the latter years of his life, I think he was in a feud with Alex Jones. Maybe I'm wrong. 
Uh, there was a disagreement, and basically what that was about, that was about the Y2K. Oh, and Alex uh, Jones' coverage of it, the famous yeah, coverage. Yeah, and uh, William, uh, Bill Cooper said that Alex Jones was a fear monger. Mm. Well, he was. He was telling them that nuclear bombs were going off and that they couldn't contact certain cities and screaming and shouting and saying that the yeah. world was ending outside oh, oh. and Bill Cooper's outside buying coke. You know, like, yeah, how you doing? You know, I phoned hey. you from a payphone in L.A. You know. But did you know that Bill Cooper came to a very violent and unpleasant end? He did die a little bit, you know, badly, didn't he? But how, how did he die? I am dead. It, the, Do you remember uh, the uh, authorities opened fire on him, uh, opened fire on him for some reason. Oh, did they? Yeah, they oh, I thought him. he died in yet another mysterious car crash. But I... no. He, oh, really? He, he, was, he was shot, shot by shot. police. Something. I with, didn't know that. He answered the door with a gun or something. I'm going to Google this. I think you better just in case I got it wrong. God, you could have got everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be awkward? Uh, Bill Cooper's death. Let's have a look and see what we can find here. Uh, here we are. Milton William Cooper, is that the same guy? Yeah, why don't we wiki it? The answer to everybody. Yeah, uh, Wikipedia, you got everything on there. Bill Cooper murder, this website's a go-go for this. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we are. Yeah, uh, Bill f- Cooper, author of Behold a Pale...